Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through and installing Kali Linux on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 host computer. We'll first download Kali Linux, then we'll create a new virtual machine, and finally install Kali Linux on that virtual machine. I'm here on the Kali Linux website where we will download Kali Linux. So we're going to go to downloads here under download Kali Linux. We'll see all the different images available to us from Kali. Since most modern computers are of a 64-bit architecture, let's go ahead and emulate one that is 64-bit and choose the Kali Linux 64-bit installer. If we do that, then Kali Linux will begin to download. And if you're new and stopping by to watch and install today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. All right, now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the VirtualBox app. So I'm first gonna go ahead and start. And since I already have it installed, I'm just gonna search for VirtualBox. And here I'm just going to go ahead and launch the application. It's available at virtualbox.org where you can download VirtualBox. Also, if you want to learn more about VirtualBox, check out my walkthrough and install video. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner. I'll make sure to go ahead and put a link in the description below. VirtualBox is an open source software for virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer through the use of this software. So we're going to go ahead and create our first virtual machine here. And we'll do this by hitting new. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and supply a name for the virtual machine. I'm gonna go ahead and call it Kali Linux since that's what I'm installing today on this virtual machine. Next, I'm gonna keep the machine folder as is. You can change it around if you have another place you wanna put it in. The type of operating system is Linux, so I'll keep that the same. You can see here the different architectures that you have available. Well, since Kali is based off of Debian, I'm actually gonna use the Debian 64-bit architecture because we downloaded a 64-bit image. And then I'm going to go ahead and select next. Following that, we get to allocate memory. Make sure to go ahead and allocate at least two gigabytes for your Linux system. Preferably more, but if you don't have it, you won't be able to. As you can see, I have 32 gigabytes available. I'm going to go ahead and allocate eight gigabytes since I can and have plenty left over. If your system has a lot less memory, you'll want to make sure that you don't give it the full amount of memory or else your system can get bogged down. After I have my memory selected for my virtual machine, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Following that, I'm going to create a new virtual disk. So the default option is fine for me. And I'm going to hit create. Following that, I'm going to select a format for my virtual disk. And I'm going to select the default VDI format and then hit next. I'm going to use the dynamically allocated disk. That way, the size of my virtual disk can grow on the computer, but it doesn't need to use up all the space and has a limit that it can reach. So I'm going to go ahead and select next. Here we get to define how much storage space to allocate to the new hard disk file that we're creating. So I'm going to go ahead and at least allocate 32 gigabytes worth. You can also change it over here if you need to. I'm going to allocate at least 32 gigs for my system because I've ran into issues allocating anything less than 32 gigabytes on certain Linux installs. So if you can, give it more. If not, give it at least 32 gigabytes. Go ahead and hit create. And at this point, you've created a virtual machine instance. As you can see here, it's currently powered off. It's called Kali Linux. Before I power it on, I'm gonna go ahead and go into settings and just change a few things around. First thing I wanna change around is in system. I wanna give two CPUs instead of one. One's fine too, but two's better for my performance. This is the amount of cores that you wanna go ahead and supply to your virtual machine. Following that, I'm gonna also enable the EFI so we can emulate a newer type of a system. And then finally, I'm gonna go to storage space and as you can see, we have two controllers, an IDE with an optical disk and a SATA controller with the actual hard disk. And what I want to do here is instead of leaving this empty, I want to go ahead and put in the Kali Linux ISO that I just got finished downloading. So I'm going to go ahead to the right and click on choose a disk file. And as you can see here, I'm in my downloads and I have this Kali Linux 2020 AMD 64 bit since we have a 64 bit emulation going on. We're gonna go ahead and select that file and just hit open. And now you can see it's been populated here in the IDE controller under the optical disk. After that, I'm gonna hit okay. And following that, I'm gonna select Kali Linux and just hit start. And now things should start booting up. It's just verifying that you wanna go ahead and select and start up the disk with Kali Linux inserted. And I do, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit start so we can go ahead and install Kali Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this dialog here. And now you can see that we are able to use Kali Linux here in the background. The one thing I suggest is using scaled mode. You can change that by hitting view and then scaled mode or control C. And now this allows us to scale the virtual machine to our liking so we can see it a little better. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it a little bit for us and then let's run through the install process. If you went ahead and made it this far, hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. 
So we got the boot menu in front of us and we want to go ahead and go to the option where we can start the installer. And while it's starting up, VirtualBox is developed by Oracle. And thanks to them, we have a very powerful free virtualization software, which is more than suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to a process where you can create a virtual machine, as we did, in an emulated environment, such as VirtualBox. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer with hardware and resources that are available alongside your main computer in a virtual environment. And as you can see here, we have the language selection for the installer. I'm going to go ahead and select English here for me, and then I'm going to hit continue. Next, we're asked to select our location. United States works for me. That's the default. I'm going to also hit continue here. Following that, we get to configure our key. Let this uh, boot up real quick. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for most platforms, including Mac, OS X, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you are using because the layout of VirtualBox doesn't really change. So you'll be familiar with it on any host platform where you choose to install Kali Linux on. It went ahead and auto-filled a host name for us. So we can go ahead and specify a host name for this computer. This is what other devices will see your computer as. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put Savvy Nick in here. For me, you can put whatever you want. Go ahead and hit continue. If you have a domain name that you'd like to use, you can specify it in here. I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit continue. Following that, we're asked if we wanna go ahead and create a new user, you can, or instead you can just hit continue and not use a new user. I'm gonna go ahead and create one called Savvy Nick with non-administrative privileges and hit continue. Following that, we're asked for a username for the account, so the last one was just the name. Savvy Nick works as well for me. And now I need to go ahead and put a password in for that user. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and confirm that password. Following that, I'm gonna hit continue. And now we're asked about our time zone. So you can go ahead and go through and select whatever time zone that you're in. Today, I'll go ahead and be in the Arizona time zone. A few things are gonna get loaded up here. Next, we're asked whether or not we wanna go ahead and use the entire disk and partition it. So that's the one that we created for our virtual machine. It should be 32 gigabytes if everything's selected properly. You also have the guided uh, entire disk method with an LVM option which is log logical volume management, allows you to edit your storage a little bit easier if you select this option. And then you have the use entire disk and set up an encrypted LVM. So one that's encrypted just means you have to put in a password every time that you log into your computer for both your user as well as the hard disk. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select the guided method for the entire disk and hit continue. As you can see here, it says, note that all your data on the disk selected will be erased, but not before you confirm the changes that you wanna make. So Right now, we wanna select the partition that we created. The SDA, you can see here, we have 34.8 gigabytes available. And it says that it's the SATA VBOX hard disk. So we know that this belongs to VBOX. We just created it. It has nothing on it, so we know we have the proper one here. If you have multiple disks, there's probably something going on where it's detecting things incorrectly because we only made one disk and we only have one disk. So just verify that you're selecting the proper disk and if you are, you can go ahead and hit continue. Following that, we're asked if we want to go ahead and create all files in one partition. This is recommended for new users, so that's what we're gonna use and hit continue. Following that, it tells us all the partitioning changes that will be made to the disk in order to go ahead and run it. You see that we have a little bit of free space at the beginning, an ESP partition, an EXT4, and a swap partition. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the finish partitioning and write the changes to disk. So I'm ready to go ahead and do those. And it warns us one last time that we are going to write the changes finally to the disk. As long as you have the proper disk selected and you're confident that it's an empty disk, you haven't really messed with it before and you created a new one just like I did, through the virtual machine creation process. Then you select yes and hit continue once you're ready. Kali Linux is a Debian based distribution with a focus in pen testing, forensics, and security. The main focus of Kali is to supply tools and for users and developers to test their software and networks to find vulnerabilities before others can exploit those vulnerabilities. It's a great distribution if you're interested in cybersecurity and there's even classes out there that are offered based around using Kali Linux to detect exploits. It's really made a name for itself over the last few years and it continues to be one of the top distributions for security. They also have documentation for beginners as well as advanced members with examples that can help you set up various scenarios in which you can test with Kali. This will take a little bit. And after the base system is installed, it's gonna ask us about configuring the package manager. Do we wanna use a network mirror? Sure, why not? Hit next. Do you have a proxy available? If you do, you can go ahead and put it in based on this format right here. I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and select continue. 
and now it's just uh, configuring the package manager. All right, and once you're on this screen, you've uh, successfully finished the installation on your virtual machine. It, it says to go ahead and make sure to remove any installation media that you might have. So what we're gonna do is hit continue and let things restart here and just finish up. Sometimes you get a little bit of an issue where it says that there was an execution error. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna shut down the machine. And the one thing I wanna make sure is to go back into settings and go back under storage. You can see that it already removed the disk for you, so it says empty. We just wanna verify that it is empty, so that's great. We'll hit okay, and let's just go ahead and relaunch it. I don't think there's actually a problem. It just seems to be a bug that gets displayed. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, and it's gonna to switch to the last mode I was in, which is the scale mode. And you can see here that we are successfully booting into Kali Linux. Give it a few moments to go ahead and boot into the desktop environment here. And now it's asking for our username. So I created one, Savunik, and then I'm gonna put my password in. And now I'm officially in my new Kali Linux operating system that's being ran on a Windows 10 machine through VirtualBox. So congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Kali Linux alongside your computer. The one thing I do suggest to do is to go ahead and install the guest editions right away. I'm gonna go into full screen mode here. So you can see it looks a lot better in full screen. The resolution's better, but if we go down here to devices and then we hit insert guest edition CD, it'll automatically mount that CD in. So once you have that mounted in, you'll go ahead and have to run this in order to help you with having the proper resolution as well as various tools that they install so you can go ahead and go between your host and the Kali Linux image seamlessly. So make sure to go ahead and look that up per the platform that you're trying to install it for because it does change ever so slightly based on whatever platform that you are installing for. Just to go through the desktop real quick, in the far top left corner, we have all the various different categories of Kali Linux. You can see here we have a vulnerability analysis with different types of tools for it password attacks, wireless attacks, forensics, reporting tools, and various other categories here. We also have settings, so you can change up your settings. Display is usually one that you wanna start with first, just so you can change up your display so you can see it a little better. Other things in here are shortcuts to minimize all windows, open up the file manager, which the terminal emulator, as well as a recording software. On the right-hand side, you have options to change whether or not you're getting notifications, look at the current date and have a calendar, and then a wired connection, which right now is being emulated from the host computer. Other things are to log out and shut down the virtual machine. And if you wanna go between it in full screen mode, you can simply hit the minimize button. And now I'm back to my Windows computer, as you can see here. And then if I wanna go back, I just have to maximize it again. You can also use the scaled mode if you want even quicker access between the two platforms. And since I'm done here, I'm gonna go ahead and just shut down Kali Linux. And congratulations, you can now run Kali Linux in your virtual box under Windows 10. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Kali Linux on VirtualBox. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.